Now that first tool is going to be the cutting tool in the 10 C's. The 10C is just a helpful mnemonic to remember some of the harder things to recreate off the landscape, but a cutting tool is going to be that first and primary tool, and folding knives with this minimalist kit can generally be relied upon with the appropriate techniques. But the Swiss Army Knife Ranger Grip is going to be the knife of choice for our minimalist kit in a cup. The Ranger Grip, similar to the ones you can get off the shelf, but this is made especially for SRO or Self-Reliance Outfitters in the Pathfinder School because it's OD green and Generally, the instructors carry these as their pocket knife. We have a large blade that we can lock in place, use it to harvest material off the landscape or craft different things around camp. We're gonna have a saw blade, generally the same length as that blade. That means that we have a cutting surface, generally the width of our hand, meaning we can take larger materials from the landscape and craft those down to whatever we may need. We're also gonna have the standard Swiss Army knife tools that come with these multi-tools being that we have a can opener and a bottle opener, a wire stripper, and we also have the screwdrivers as part of those different tools. On the back side, we're gonna have a Phillips head screwdriver that we can use, as well as a reamer or an awl. The blade, the saw, and the reamer or awl are gonna be the three primary tools because we can use these to actually manipulate material out in the wilderness and create different notches for different tools and expand the ability to craft different things from the landscape. That next item, the second item in the 10 C's is a combustion device. This could be anything as part of our minimalist kit. And the beauty about this is that we can craft that kit however we want to. But a ferro rod, a six inch by half inch diameter ferro rod is what I placed in the kit and recommend. We can put any combustion device in there we want to. But a ferro rod is gonna give us thousands and thousands and thousands of strikes. This ferro rod in the video, I've had for almost a decade and it's still here, still working. But we can take this ferro rod, light, tender sources or even light a stove and get that stove lit and we can take this with our Swiss Army knife and actually use it to spark but we can apply a little bit of technology or woodcraft by grabbing a toggle placing that toggle over top of our saw blade that we use as a striker holding it in place with our hand we can actually bear down on that ferro rod even more now because the saw blade doesn't lock we use that toggle to lock it in place or apply a little bit of pressure holding that in place giving us better purchase on that ferro rod to get a fire going our third item is going to be cordage in this case we have a hundred foot roll of bank line bank line is a fire and forget cordage meaning we can use it and then generally when we're done with it we can throw it in the fire or toss it because it's almost a single use cordage. We want to hang on to other cordages like paracord because we can use it again and again, but bank line is going to be a perfect cordage for lashing, stringing up a tripod or putting a shelter together for firecraft or making tools off the landscape like a cane pole or a trot line to go after food or game, as well as making different tools with round lashings or a quick lash with an arbor knot. And then we can use this with different firecraft items like a pump drill or a bow drill to get a fire going in an emergency. Item number four in the 10 C's is some sort of container. In this case, we want a metal container because we can take that metal container and place it over a fire. The metal container or a nesting cup like the one in the video as part of our kit can do a variety of things for us. It is the heart of the kit, meaning that that cup is probably the hardest thing to recreate off the landscape, but one of the most durable and multifunctional items that we have in our kit. That metal cup gives us the ability to boil water. We can use two sticks to put it on and pull it off the fire. We can use it to collect water, both in summertime or in winter, collect rainwater, gather materials, and boil them over the fire, making them safe to consume. Our fifth C is going to be that cover item or shelter item. We do not have an item inside of the kit. We are actually wearing that item on us. Our clothing is always our first line of defense in a survival situation to protect us from the elements. On top of that, we can look for things that are already naturally made, like a bent over tree, simply add more debris to the top of that and a bed below, and we have our shelter. Now the sixth item is going to be a candling device or just some sort of flashlight. In this case we have a headlamp for our sixth item. That headlamp gives us the ability to see in the dark and perform tasks in the dark or land navigate in the dark as well as signal for search or rescue during hours of limited visibility. This headlamp comes with several different functions on it. We have a low, medium, and high beam white light. And then we also have a green and red lens light for different uses in the field. But we can also hold down the button for about five seconds 
and activate the strobe function on our headlamp, making it a passive signal that we can string up in a tree to alert search and rescue and guide them into our position during nighttime or hours of limited visibility. But this headlamp also comes with a unique function in that we can remove that headband if we don't want it, and there's a Velcro adapter. We attach that to the headlamp and we can place the entire headlamp on our hat if we have the hook pile tape on the outside of our hat making it another hands-free device but it can attach to our hat very easily we can use it the same way and then even take off our hat put the hat up in the tree to use as a passive signal at nighttime a great function multi-function item and then we can even hold that flashlight in our hands if we need to a great piece of kit for a minimalist survival kit that seventh item is a compass only this time we've decided to add pen and paper to our compass because it fits in our minimalist kit but with that compass and with that paper and pencil we can actually keep track of our legs as we move through the woods that way we never become lost we can use the information as part of our travel log to find our way out even if we don't have a map in the area but we keep an accurate direction an 